Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of this tutorial series. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a 2D platformer. It's pretty simple in processing. There's not going to be too much, but we're going to be doing a lot. I'm really excited. So uh, I guess we can go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm just going to say that I have I already set up this, and also in the sketch folder, I actually have a data folder, which you can make yourself, and I put in a player image. Now, I got this image by making it myself in something called Magic of Oxel, and it's a really nice program, so if you want to do some pixel art for free, it's probably one of the better ones, in my opinion. I don't know about anybody else, but I really like it because it adds like shadows and stuff onto them also. So it just looks really nice, and uh, yeah, that's all I have so far. So let's go ahead and jump right into the program. First of all, in the size function, you can see that I put P3D, even though I just said that this is a 2D platformer. But I'm doing this because it gives me access to stuff like the camera function, which allows the camera to be moved around and follow the player, and that's pretty much all we're going to be using it for right now. So uh, yeah, I guess first things first, we can go ahead and make a player and this player is going to be the image that I showed you earlier and it's going to have a couple functions it's gonna have oh actually first we need to make it so I guess we can go we're gonna go ahead and set up the size of the player and the position of the player in the constructor but we're gonna do that later because we haven't actually made the player class so for now it just equals a new player and down here we can go ahead and say player dot update which is going to be the first method and player Dot render which actually shows it on the screen so now that we have that let's go ahead and make the player class so I'm gonna go ahead and call this new tab player and make a player class with a capital P because that's what I did earlier and I guess we can go ahead and I don't know um well let's go ahead and make an entity class also because later we might add NPCs so first let's go ahead and make this entity class and this is going to store one thing for now which is just a position but we might need some like variables later on like health and stuff like that but we're not going to get into that right now so i guess right now we're just going to make a p vector position yeah let's just make everything vectors because that's easier so okay so that and then we also need to get a get function so p vector is the return type and then we're going to say get position and that's going to return the position so then if we ever need it on later we can just say get position and it will return the positions values so that's all we need right now and then we can go ahead and say extends entity and what that's going to do is going to let us have everything all the variables and stuff inside of this in player without actually typing anything into player so now what we need to do is make the player constructor i think so player oops i spelled that wrong player and in this, I don't know if we're going to have anything, let's just go ahead and make the update method down here, and the void render. So, that's all we have right now. Um, I guess we can go ahead and make up here, since we're going to have an image, we're going to say p -im image. Yeah, so, it's going to be the actual texture of the player. And I think right now, I'm just going to go, go ahead and go over what we just did. So... We made a player object, everything's going to be objects right now, because that's a lot easier, all classes. And then <clears throat> we initialized it over here, we don't have anything in these brackets, or whatever they are, you want to call them, because we didn't put anything in here yet. So right now it just makes an empty player object, and then we run both of these. Now there's a few things I want to do real fast. First of all, when we're making our game, if we need to resize it, and we want everything to stay the same size without messing all up, instead of using the the width variable for everything because that can actually change the size of things because if you use hard code for some things and <clears throat> the width value for another thing when you resize the window it might not match up so if there's someone using like a different size monitor or something this might not work so what we're going to do is we're going to say int w and int height this is a really inefficient way but it's the simplest way for right now <laughs> so say width equals 128 which is what we set the width earlier and 
Oh, uh, oops, I actually typed int over here, so I'm making the variable. That's weird. Okay, and then height equals 640. So that's what we have right now. So then instead of using width and height, we can use these. So when you resize the window, nothing actually changes. So like right now, since it's in pre-3D, we can actually full screen the window, and nothing will change size if we make it according to width and height. And so what we're going to do now is... Uh, I'll do that later. Okay, so first of all, we need to be able to take in a few things just so we can set up this position vector because we actually just declared it in the entity class and we have to initialize it in the player class. So we're going to go ahead and say where we want it to start at, which we'll put in here. So when we make it over here, we'll just type in like new p vector or something. So p vector position there's going to be a temporary position so I always put that because I that's just what I do a lot and we're also going to need a collider size oh yeah that's something else I need so there's going to be a circle around the player since this player is pretty much decently square I guess you could fit a circle around it as the collider so then you can just say because circles are one of the easier types of colliders because squares are a little complicated and for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to make everything have circle colliders. And what we're going to do with that is, if there's two circles around the player, like there's one circle around the player and then one circle around something we want it to collide with, the distance between the two circles, if this distance right here, represented by this line, is less than the radius of this circle combined with this circle, which would be maybe about this, I guess. I don't know. If the distance is less than that, because if the distance is less than that, then obviously, like if we put this circle right here, then if this distance can't be the same as this distance and this distance, so this distance is shorter than these two combined, which means they're overlapping. I really hope that makes sense. Um, there's other tutorials out there. I learned this a long time ago from someone named Dan Schiffman. He has a coding train channel, so go go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. But it's really good thing to learn if you want to make some simple colliders. In some of my games, I use square colliders because it's more efficient. But this way is... Okay, so anyways, I got carried away there. So we're going to go ahead and make a the radius of the collider because that's pretty much all we need. We don't actually need a circle. We just need the radius, so we just need a distance from the center of the player to the outside of the player the point where we want it to touch. So let's go ahead and make that a float and we're gonna say collider size I guess. I don't know. I guess that's an okay variable. And then also we're gonna need a git down here. It's too bad there's I'm used to uh, doing stuff in uh, clips so there's actually a thing where you can generate the stuff so this is gonna be a little difficult to type this every time. So git collider size and then it's just going to return the collider size, I guess. Yeah, yeah, okay. There we go. And over here, we're going to be able to say, I guess, R. So that's going to be put into the actual thing over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say position equals new P vector. So this is initialized and setting up the position thing over here that's inside of this now so that's going to equal this all of its things I guess position dot uh, x comma position dot y comma position dot z well you know, no we don't need to z because it's actually in even though it's in 3d it's 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 you know, okay yeah there we go so the vector function can actually take in 2d coordinates it still works fine which is really nice so now what we're going to do is we're going to say down here in update I guess for now, let's just go ahead and leave that blank. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot something. I forgot something. So, um, collider size is going to equal R because it's technically the radius, I guess. I don't know. There. That should work fine. So now what we're going to do is those we're actually not going to use too much of this one for now. We're going to use it in later episodes. We're just going to get everything set up right now. So in render, I guess we're going to go ahead and say make the image at that position of the position variable so if the I mean, image is automatically <laughs> translated to the left top corner so we're going to need to say image mode so everything's drawn from the center and that's going to be just like ellipse mode or rect mode or something so it's just center <laughs> and then sorry 
I'm a little sick. So image mode is that, and then we're gonna say image at position dot x comma position dot y, and then we're gonna say the size of the position is going to be r times two. Even though this is a square, I understand that um, it should be roughly the right amount. So image blah, 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 blah. okay, <clears throat> that should work. Oh, oops. Okay, I forgot. R was only locally stored up in the constructor. There we go. That should work just fine. So then we need to give it the image, which is oh yes, we need we have this texture up here. I almost forgot about that. So now we need to give this player constructor one more thing. We need to give it a string, and we're going to call that texture. And what that's going to do is we're just going to put a string over here with the name of the file in data, <clears throat> which is just player dot png I believe uh, yeah png so what this is going to be is texture equals load image which will load up an image from the data file and that's going to equal the texture we just got in from up here so the that one <laughs> yeah I don't know what I'm saying anymore so then down here we can go ahead and say texture and this texture is referring to this one which is referring to this one which is referring to this one so in other words we're just saying make that image <laughs> so that's pretty complicated anyways <clears throat> over here in update I guess we can go ahead and say um, uh, position just get some movement going position dot x plus plus I guess that's okay and uh, yeah now we have to go ahead and give this all the stuff we just did so first up there's a string which is called player dot png I hope that's capitals it might tell me later if that's an uh, error don't worry about it until I fix it so and then we're going to say new p vector for the position, which, oops, I don't need that right there, which is going to be width divided by 2, comma, height divided by 2, I guess, for now. And I'm using these heights set and the widths that we just set up earlier, so when you resize the window, nothing changes. <clears throat> and I guess that should be just about right. Hmm. Okay, oh, yeah, oh, oops, sorry, I forgot. Then we just need to give it a size, which is... <clears throat> I don't know what that is actually. Just go ahead and go in, into this into this image and see how big. Oh, I okay, guess so it doesn't matter because the processing resizes it for us. So what this is going to be is, I guess it'll be around 50 because if I put 25 in here, remember it's times two, so it should be about 50 pixels, which is a nice size. So I guess that's okay for now. I I think that will work. Unless the I got the image format wrong. Yep, I got the image format wrong. Okay, let's go back it's in this process let's go ahead and end that and let's see if that's what it's actually complaining about yeah I think it is uh, yep dot PNG okay I always mess that up <laughs> okay <clears throat> I don't know why it does that everyone's sometimes it tells me it needs to be capped sometimes it doesn't okay let's keep going so this should work yep there's the player and I forgot the image is a little bit bigger on the width so this is going to be 2.5 I guess maybe 4 would be better but you know who cares Let's go ahead and, yep, that looks about fine. So I'm going to make that three because why not? See how that looks? That looks about right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We have a player now and we can go ahead and put movement later on. I don't know how long this recording's been going. Um, where do I look at that at, anyways? I don't know where I look at that. Oh, recording's 13 minutes. Okay. Um, I guess we can go ahead and end this episode here. So right now, all we really have is a player class which is really simple at the moment we're going to go ahead and add player movement later on and camera follow in the next episode which i'll be doing right after this but i have to go vacuum so yeah that's pretty good for now um i guess i'll see you guys later and i hope i really hope you enjoyed this episode i'm going to try to do the other one as fast as i can i really like doing these so uh, yeah if you can go ahead and like or subscribe to the channel it would help